Hey, we're back on Joystick Justice League, the inaugural episode. We're doing a big, massive indie blow up for the next gen, current gen, PC, you name it. We just talked about a whole bunch of cool, like sublime, fantasy oriented titles. Now let's get into some of the fun action stuff. We're going to start right off with something that gamers are really excited about, especially old school gamers like myself who grew up with games like River City Ransom. Well, successful back in Kickstarter just happened for the spiritual sequel. River City Ransom Underground, which is coming from a Canadian company, uh, Canadis Creative, which is actually based out of Ottawa, Ontario. So um, you saw this trailer. What, what did you? What immediately struck you about this? Do you think this is going to still work 20 years later? I, I, I think it will, especially for for guys that, that love these style of games. And uh, and uh, we're looking at PS4 uh, only one. Uh, this one is uh, so far actually coming out. They haven't really even talked about the platforms yet. It's not like you know Mighty Number no. Nine, where they had different actual platform stretch goals. I think this one could be assumed to be multi-platform. I think you'll see this on Steam, you'll see this on PSN, Xbox Live Arcade. I mean, really, this is such a, such a cult uh, franchise that I don't think they could ever ignore the potential of getting us on multi-platform. What, what I really like about this, if you never played River City Ransom, it, it's essentially Double Dragon, but an RPG version of like Double Dragon. So it's, it's your side-scrolling beat-em-up, but it was, it, what made R River City Ransom so ahead of its time back in the day was the fact that it was non-linear. You could go to basically any stage, at any time you could go backwards, forwards, which is something you didn't even see in double games like Double Dragon and Streets of Rage back in the day. Um, but also the fact that you could go into towns and actually upgrade your character. You could buy food, you could buy new weapons, you could talk to people. It was, it was just so it's such a refreshing take on a side-scrolling beat-em-up genre. And, and what you can tell from this one is that it's trying to give it like a 16-bit makeover. As just to yeah. say, this would have been the sequel you would have seen on the Super Nintendo or the Sega Genesis. So, you know, I mean, I know that among younger gamers who didn't grow up with these old-school scrolling beat yeah, yeah. why would like a younger gamer get into something like this? I think they'll, they'll get into it because it is your side-scrolling beat em up but what, they, what these guys are doing is that they're taking these old school elements, but they're bringing in some of the some of some of the stuff that we're seeing in some current uh, action kind of games and throwing those elements into it. And I don't know if that'll do. To it kind of like revitalize it for a new generation and make exactly. it relevant, right? Yeah, because you know, because they they they, they might not like just that that traditional, but like I said, it's, it's adding some of these other elements. And uh, that's going to make it really cool. Yeah, it, it seems like they're kind of going with a sandbox approach for this. Yep. I mean, they even said flat out in their Kickstarter video that they're really, like you said, they're trying to take old school game mechanics but rejig them to make them yep. uh, more interesting dynamic. Uh, you, you saw that too in the, in Scott Pilgrim versus the World of Video Game, oh, yeah. which is coming out, which which came out from the company we're going to be talking about next. Uh, that was basically a reimagining of River City Ransom, yep. but set in, in Toronto. Yep. And, and like you said, using modern mechanics, and, and that one actually took, took off really well. I mean, especially it being did. attached to the, the Scott Pilgrim franchise, yep. which was big around teens and preteens. So that was Tribute Games who made Scott Pilgrim. They got a big one coming out for PS4 and PC. You got excited when you saw this. It's called Mercenary Kings. Yeah. Tribute Games, of course, is based out of our country, Canada, Montreal. Uh, what did you notice about this? No, I, I first saw this and I wasn't expecting a lot. And, and, and it's written the name for these guys, Tribute Games. I mean, these guys are taking, you know, beloved kind of uh, genres of games and they're putting them, their own spin and they're putting, they're putting the real love into these games. I mean, this is like, it's like a take, take on like a Contra and Metal Slug. Oh, I mean, Metal Slug, absolutely. But, but I mean, I mean it, it felt like to a whole new level with these guys. Yeah, and I think that new level is what we were we were both kind of agreed on. This oh, yeah. really feels like a side-scrolling Borderlands, oh, yeah. just like this open concept, jump and jump out, multi-mission, uh, kind of like an action RPG in a sense. I mean, it is a side-scrolling platformer, but we already learned that you can make your own guns. There's incredibly deep gun crafting in this. Yeah. Like I said, you got four-player jump and jump co-op like you had in Borderlands, so you can essentially join in on somebody else's mission regardless of whether you've actually done that or not. Yeah, that, that's that's gonna make it so cool too. It, it, it could, it's it's they could they very well could have just made this just a single player game and it still would have been pretty cool but I mean to have you know other people just join whenever they want to in a multiplayer element there that just that makes it even sweeter. Oh yeah and I think just again the customization and again the varied environments even if you do decide to play this as a single player game there'll be just enough to unlock sweet. and discover in this yeah. and just you know great action you know everybody loves a game like Contra Gunstar Heroes it's just fast frenetic action it's uh 
it, it just looks like a lot of fun and, and it also has that 16-bit art style which is slowly starting to gain popularity now that we've kind of you know done all the 8-bit resurgences all the pixel art stuff now I can kind of see where like you know again like the old Neo Geo kind of graphics are starting to come more into like indie games and we're starting to see slowly start seeing things come circle matter as well yeah. and, and a lot of it's probably going to come from these guys because I mean, I mean you know there's so much to work with and, and uh, you know if this is anything more I'm expected I think these guys are gonna make more. And, and, you can tell is... they have a love for the, for the era. They're not just oh, yeah. they're not looking at it with like this kind of ironic, you know, critical eye where it's 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 just like oh it's it's old it's kind of cheesy. No, they actually you can tell they they truly adore uh, pixel art and, and 80s and 90s culture. So and, and it really shows in the reference. So that's Mercenary Kings coming from Tribute Games. That's coming out uh, probably sometime near the end of the year. It's supposed to be a PS4 launch title. Uh, it's already available on PC, so you can actually get this right now on Steam. But if you are a next-gen console owner, you can see this on PS4 probably by the end of this year. Um, moving in with kind of like retro resurgent pixel art games, there's this new one uh, that's coming out finally for PS4, PC, and the web, which actually made it splash on the Wii. Now this is essentially the flagship game for the Ouya. It's called Towerfall Ascension. So um, yeah, I, I haven't played on the Ouya yet, but we saw a pretty extended gameplay. What, what did you notice immediately about this game that might make it appeal to other people right now? Well, uh, I think it's gonna appeal to some people, and uh, this might sound a little weird, but I think people that you're a fan of Smash, but like might get into this. Oh yeah, but, I mean, I never even thought of that. But yeah. it's, it's not it's not just uh, side to side. I mean, it says right, it's, 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 there's some vertical elements to this as well. It, it seems to be all vertical, so we're literally is yeah. an increase to the tower. Like there's no horizontal nature, which is interesting because most uh, like MOBAs I see like this usually happen in that fashion. It's it's gonna be a it's gonna be a fun multiplayer game, and and, uh, and online as well. I think that this uh, could have done pretty well though, depending on the platform that it comes out on. Yeah, it's just it's I'm sure it's gonna get ported pretty much everything on this. So I mean, I, what I can immediately tell from this is that it's off, off, it's gonna click right away with fans of Terraria. I mean, this just oh, yeah. feels like like the best of the multiplayer aspects of Terraria. It's coming in there. Also for fans of Awesome Knots, awesome you know, nice. like two yeah. D kind of MOBAs. Yeah. And, and just and also fans of like Legend of Zelda Four Swords, you know, which which came out for Game Boy Advance and the GameCube. And I remember being at, at a party recently at the Personal Computer Museum in Brantford at uh, Sid Bolton's place, uh, and we actually got to watch a few eight, nine, ten year olds actually connected on a GameCube yeah. playing Four was, Swords, and what, they were in trance. It was too cool, man. Like a and. By the way, if you haven't been to the Personal Computer Museum in Brantford, do yourself a favor and check it out. This guy has, to the best of my knowledge, he has the most complete video complete game Complete Xbox collection, collection complete, complete game, complete game collection. collection, period, guys. Yeah, I mean, it's just... Uh, if you haven't checked this place out, I mean, I don't know what the hell's wrong with you. Yeah, so that's the Personal Computer Museum in Brantford, Ontario. Uh, but uh, yeah, so Towerful, this is, again, making waves on the mobile market. It's coming up for PS4. You know, it just looks like a, a pleasure to play, fast frenetic action. And uh, keeping it in line, we got one more to talk about before the break. Another game that uh, that Joe just turned me on to, which is only available on iOS right now. Um, but uh, this this looks like a, a nice throwback as well to certain games of yesteryear on the PC. Yeah. What this is Device Six. This is coming out from this came out from Smoke Games just recently. Tell me a bit about this game. Why it's cool. Well, Smoke Games, uh, the, the guys are, aren't all that well known. You know, they, they've done some other cool stuff. They've done Gear Walk and Beat Sneak Bandit. But I mean, th this is is really cool, guys. This is basically it's a text-based adventure game with some horror elements thrown. You, you're literally yeah, the levels are basically what you're, re you're reading. It's it's, it's the text, uh, and you're you're, you're you're hearing clues, you're seeing visual clues, and you're navigating around the world. And, and, and it's, it's using the, the elements of, of the iPad. You, you're not just scrolling through and reading. You, you have to turn. And you're actually using the geometric system of the, of the iPad to, itself to, to engage in the game. To solve the, the puzzle, it's you're, you're basically you're, it's like you're solving the, solving the puzzle of the, these chapters of, of this book. I mean, it, it's one it's one of the more unique games that, that I've seen in a little while. 
And you know, we're, I'm seeing a lot of this kind of stuff on, on uh, the portable devices, especially at the iPad. So these guys are willing to take the uh, gambles and make some really cool games like this. And I'm hoping to see more of stuff like this. Yeah, it's weird. Like when I watched you playing it, it's almost like a quasi virtual reality in the sense that you're reading this book, but you're flipping your iPad and moving around the room yeah. to solve this puzzle. So it's almost like your your own augmented reality puzzle platformer. But it also it lends credence to the text-based story ventures of the old PC gaming days, which are still a hit. I mean, yeah. those games never really went away. They just they become they became kind of like an underground niche. But I, I'm starting to see, like with games like Device Six, yeah. that this may be something that the mobile market can really latch onto as yeah. as as like a, a a platform kind of exclusive. Yeah, and and, and not a very expensive game. Uh, I think it was maybe. Two ninety nine or three ninety nine. Yeah, absolutely. At three nine, I think I think it's a good buy for anybody that's, that wants to play something unique, and not just playing these traditional games. I, I think it's worth checking out. Yeah, just the sense of depth will just really blow you away. I mean, yeah. it, it's really it's it reminds me of those old picture storybooks uh, when we were kids, where it would have a, a cutout in the page, and you would see something in the background. And it's like when you move your phone, you can actually see different parallax layers of, of like a, of like photographic imagery yeah, moving. It's, it, cool. it's a very trippy experience, but also a very compelling story and a great way of presenting it. With actually making you interactive with your actual device. And it's making 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 you think. It's not just a mindless game that you're playing. You really really got to think your way through this. It's uh, it took me like an hour to to complete that first chapter. Oh yeah. I mean I mean I, I really had to think my way through it. I mean too cool. Absolutely. So incredible stuff. Uh, actually, before we go to break, we still got a few more titles to even talk about. There's so much to talk about. Let's get back into console territory with this game that's come out from Clay Entertainment. These were the makers of Shank 1 and 2. They're coming out with their new title somewhere next year called Don't Starve. So I talked about this on an old Joystick Judgment Day episode, but now that there's been a few more trailers, um, I want to talk to somebody else about it. So um, this is a survival craft game. So what, what's survival craft for anybody who doesn't know what survival craft is? Because it's still a pretty new genre. Yeah, it, it, it's, uh, you know, going into this, I thought, I thought that it was, it was going to be like, uh, maybe almost kind of like a mod that came out for, for Minecraft. Not that at all. I mean, uh, these guys made, made Shank. Really, really cool game too. If you get a chance to play it, play it. Uh, I, I was kind of surprised by, by what I saw. You, you're, you're literally, you're in a world creating stuff and there's so many kind of cool elements to this. So you're, you're trying to survive and it's not going to be just for yourself. Right? Yeah, absolutely. I, I, you, I think like where it kind of diverges from other survival craft games like Minecraft and Terraria, where I, th I think we're, with Minecraft and Terraria, the whole idea is to see what you can build. Okay, yeah. like how what, where you can bring your it's like a Lego set, like where you can bring yeah. your own creativity to designing the world. Where with Don't Starve, it's more of an arcade approach in the yeah. sense that you get one life. You you don't you don't yeah. come back and, and start again. It's always randomly generated. Every really every experience is randomly generated. So it reminds me of a game that came out for PlayStation. 3 and Vita last year called Tokyo Jungle, mm -hmm. where it's essentially this, this again, this new genre of generational gameplay that's really good for gaming on the go and a quick fix. So you, you, like mm -hmm. with, with Don't Start, you're going to see how long you can last, but even if you only last, say, a year or two in the game, you've at least gotten your quick fix and, and you can go play it again. So it's, it's mm -hmm. I like I like the cartoon style, it's, it's hand-drawn. Mm -hmm. it, it also has a lot of humor, this, the fact that you can throw parties for the yeah. wooden creatures. And it just seems to actually have some kind of overarching story, whereas I think Minecraft and Terraria, it's more up to your imagination and the stories that you create within your experiences, where this actually seems to have some kind of overarching area. And it's going to be one of those uh, games to it that uh, you're going to play that I think that, you know, it's going to be the ones where not everybody's going to have the same experience, everybody's going to get something for themselves out of this. Yeah, absolutely. And again, it's just this whole idea of like randomly generated gameplay that keeps it fresh every single time. So it's something to be excited about. So that's Don't Start from Play Entertainment coming out for PS4 and PC. Uh, so now our next game is again aligning with that whole new indie focus that Sony is really touting. This one's Doki Doki Universe coming from Human Nature Studios. And I think this is uh, pretty much their first game of the game. I mean, they, they do have some famed developers. I think one of the developers actually worked on Toe Jam and Earl. So, yeah. yeah so what did you see from from this kind of quirky little little hit that's coming out for PS4, PS3, and Vita in unison? Yeah, it, it's good. It's got a really really quirky kind of really kind of neat kind of hand drawn thing, and it, it's basically a pl puzzle platforming game with some social as aspects thrown into boot. Yeah, it really does feel like uh, like Little Big Planet meets The Sims. Yeah. 
Yeah, it, it, it doesn't seem like there's, there's really like an emphasis on action here. It's really about how you interact with all the NPCs, yeah. but not only the NPCs, but how how you also interact with, with the people on your PlayStation network. So basically this game, it has a very long convoluted story, but essentially you're this robot who was abandoned by his family, left on this planet, and now you you've been tasked with the with the task you've been tasked with getting your humanity back. So essentially this game's kind of like a moral tale in that it's gonna act put all these mini games in front of you and all these quizzes you have to do to kind of rate what kind of person you are, like what kind yeah. of humanity you have, which this could go in a lot of interesting directions, yeah. especially once you start getting Facebook integration yeah. involved, Twitter integration, PSN. I think you're really gonna find a lot about yourself, but not only that, but also these yeah. otherwise faceless people you keep meeting online. <laughs> you you, you were saying you want, I'm a better human than you. <laughs> See, that's the, that's, that's, the, right. that's the weird part about Sony's quirkiness is that yeah. there's always some kind of sinister yeah. underlying note to some of the most happy games. Like it's, it's like that game Ho Hokum that's coming out <laughs> um, where yeah. it's like it's supposed to be like this trippy art experiment but really it's just a big sperm flying yeah. around and like impregnating eggs. Yeah. <laughs> it's always like this subliminal kind of thing going on. So, But it, it looks exciting. I mean I love the hand-drawn art to this. Yeah, it looks pretty sweet. Very original, very, very quirky. Original. For, again, for fans of like Little Big Planet, you know, obviously you gotta lock stickers, decorations, so there's a lot of customization going on with this. And, and I like the way that the fact that it's gonna sync with all three platforms. So yeah. whether you have a PS3 Vita or a PS4, you're gonna get the exact same experience and you can take that on the go. Yeah, and that, that's, that's a, actually a big thing with the PS4. Be able to do some of that stuff. The remote play functionality, I have to say, I, I, I've already tested it out on Battlefield and NBA 2K14 and Killzone. It has to be seen to believe. The remote play functionality, the, the idea that you can stream PS4 on the go is a very, very real reality, okay? I don't even have the greatest Wi-Fi signal, and I'm running Battlefield at a near 60 frames a second on my Vita with no artifacting, no pixelization. It's a gorgeous thing, so the next generation is looking bright. And continuing on with that brightness and how the indie revolution that's happening right now is really going to drive home what, where gaming is going to go now. There's this game now coming out called Octodad from Young Horses, alright? So this is a sequel to this underground PC hit. It is a buzz right now. This is the game that you would least likely figure to be a buzz, but yet it's got gamers' imaginations just by the by the ball grip. So what did you see from Octodad? You seem to enjoy this a lot. Uh, I, I thought this game was hilarious. I mean, the, the, this, you're, you're literally, you're an octopus trying to make his way through normal every day of the life. I mean... <laughs> it's, it's exactly what it is. It's a day in the life game of you trying to pose as a human being. Yeah. But what's the problem with that? It's, a, it's so bizarre. It's because you're... You got tentacles. You got tentacles, and like you, you're, you're, you're literally, you could, you could, you could take this guy through a grocery store and just flip him around and just smash take everything off. Oh, that's hilarious. Oh, it's, it's great to see him in the living away. room trying to put the yeah. silverware in the, in the china away and you just smash it every place. And, and this goes to what, like, I, I, this is a, par oh, this man. is a great example of parody. Yeah. Like I said before on my previous podcast. When you get to the end of like a console generation, when you've done everything you can with certain graphics engines and certain gameplay mechanics that we're accustomed to in 3D action adventure games like this, that's when parody starts to come in. That's the same thing that happens in movies. When you come to the end of like a genre, you start to get parody, and this is pure parody. The fact that it purposely makes the control shitty. Yeah. Like it actually wants, like it wants to deconstruct your playing experience and, and, and to actually make and to lampoon the idea of game playing itself. Yeah, and it's a, it's gonna be one of those games that I hope, I hope it does well, and, and it's it's gonna be a game that uh, it's 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 hilarious being an octopus, just doing whatever you want. It's it's a game that I hope doesn't get overlooked because I mean it just. It looks, I don't think it will. It I, I, like I, I think Sony's completely behind this game. Oh, yeah. uh, this is again like with Mercenary Kings, The Witness. And um, don't starve. This was kind of pushed to the forefront. Like yeah. they actually showed this in E3 they and did, yeah. played up with like Odd World, New and Tasty, and all these major indie titles that are gonna mm -hmm. kind of drive this next generation of gaming. So again, great stuff coming out from uh, Young Horses. And in that vein, you also showed me you're you're like the iOS cool game man. You so, showed yeah. me another game in that vein. This one's called Clumsy Ninja. So this one's coming from this. This already came out just recently from Natural Motion, only on iOS. So what can you tell me about this, just this very deceptively, deceptively simple game? It, it is very simple, you're, 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 you're starting out, you got this 
ninja. And at the, at the very beginning, he is he's a clumsy ninja. He is completely useless. You can't you can't take him one on the foot, and he's tripping and falling on his ass. And we, basically, the idea here is you're trying to build him up from this clumsy ninja into a, into a real ninja by by training him to do stuff. You know, by uh, you can you can take him, you can flip him and throw him through a basketball hoop. You can toss him across the screen. You, you can actually you know, teach him to do some stuff. But you can, it's one of these games where you you can just do whatever you want with him. It's almost, like the, it's almost like the anti-Tamagotchi. It's, like, yeah. it's almost like the complete reversal where you're not really nurturing. Are you nurturing him? Are you training him? Well, you're, you're, you're nurturing him, but I mean, you, you have the freedom to, to treat him like a... Uh, to like basically nerd. be sadistic. Yeah, you, you can do whatever you want with him. You, you don't have to train him. You can just toss him around. If you want to, you, you, you have freedom to do whatever you want. I love ragdoll games. Oh, it's, 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 you know what this reminded me of immediately when I was playing it? Like, it reminded me of Pain for the PS3 where, again, using ragdoll physics to yeah. just beat the shit out of like a, of like an online character and just have a hoot doing it. So this is again a little quick fix that, you know, if you got your iPhone, how much was this game? Uh, this was a free game, Mike. It was free. It can't be free. And this was... Free to play. And, uh, and uh, this was something that, uh, that actually got showed up at the Apple conference earlier this year. Yeah. To, to kind of showcase with the hardware. And, and it took these guys a little bit of time to come with this. Uh, they talked about this early in the year and it was supposed to come out fairly soon. But they, they, they took some time with it. And I was really surprised that they made it free to play. Yeah, you know, it's funny you mentioned that because I can actually see that like little technical nuances in, in the way this game plays that I didn't see on previous iOS games. I think you're right. It's kind of it's it's almost like a nice little tech demo. It is like the rubber ducks word for the yeah. PS3, where you can kind of see where this new technology is going to be adopted in the future games. So something that's free to download, you can kind of see where the next generation of uh, iOS games are coming from. So uh, don't go away. We got one more break. We're going to come back with some breaking news on the actual industry itself. A little bit of shifting of positions in the game world. We're also going to talk about some of the games we've been playing. And uh, yeah, so we'll be back after this break. Thanks for watching.